Hello. Welcome to Hello. State Daily. Casey Porter here. So glad that you decided to tune in. Fans, today we have a very, very, very special guest joining O State Daily. Quarterback from 97 to 2000 in the Oklahoma State football program, Tony Lindsay joins O State Daily. Tony, how the heck are you? I got to ask you, do you ever age, man? You look just like you did when you got on campus in 97, man. I, I, I guess not too much as far as uh, the looks, but you ask me about my body, my body parts, oh, they're definitely aging. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so before we get into anything else, I got to ask you about your dad. You're a junior, so Tony Lindsay Sr., absolute legend in Colorado football, absolute legend certainly in the Denver area, and really cool that you and your three other brothers, including Gabe, who played at OSU, all got to coach together and turn around far northeast there in Denver, right? Yeah, we did. And you know what? That's not the that's not the first school we turned around. We were at uh, Denver South High School okay. um, to start out. And we turned that program around and just were able to do it the next place we went. So um, it's, it's, it's been great. You know, whenever you're with family, it's always good times. Um, <clears throat> sometimes we get along, sometimes we don't. But at the end of the day, uh, we, we go with what dad says. And so it's, it's been a learning process. It's been really, really fun. And we've accomplished a lot. Absolutely. And he was obviously your dad, but he's also known as a father figure to God knows how many young kids in that area. Can you kind of talk to that? Man, I mean, gosh, he was, he's been coaching since we were in high school. And yeah. so just three decades. The, yeah. I mean, just the relationship he's been able to have um, with all our friends, so with all the players, you know, that have came and gone under his, uh, under his programs. <clears throat> Those who even have fathers, you know, have looked at him like, man, this is a guy that, is an inspiration. He's very motivative. Um, he wants the best for us. And it's genuine, man. He's really authentic. He's down to earth and just just fun. He absolutely is. And your brother Gabe, what's he doing these days? Gabe is uh he's just working, man. As his okay. kids have him everywhere. He has a girl, uh, a daughter playing volleyball. Uh, matter of fact, he has two. So they're ripping and running. One just graduated from college. Um, and so he's just all around, man, just doing his thing. He's looking into getting into uh, selling cars right now. And so he's always yeah. just moving yeah. on to the next thing. He always did the one thing I would not want to do in football, and that's return kicks. <laughs> I mean, that just doesn't sound fun. You just get the crap beat out of him. Hey, that that, that right? was his thing. He, he found yeah. something exciting about it and, and loved doing it. He did. Okay, so let's talk about your football career at Oklahoma State. You burst onto the scene. Really where you made your name first was that game in 97 – the soul man, James Brown, came into town for Texas. You had Ricky Williams coming in. He was the running back, Heisman candidate coming in. And Oklahoma State just <laughs> slaughtered the Longhorns that day. Thanks in large part to the long. I remember the, the speed option run around the right side. And then I remember he scoring on the third possession down there on the, on I believe is the east end zone down there. Uh-huh. And then the big one I remember, Tony, was after the Texas scored, you went back to pass, you pulled it down, and then you kind of made a couple guys miss and went for like 60 yards. So what do you remember about that game? The first thing I remember, man, it was an early game. I think we played at like 11. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gosh, it was early, and it, it yeah. was different playing at that time. So I remember being early, um, but it was just something about that day, um, I think, that we all felt. Um, and it was kind of time for us to, to put ourselves on the map. I mean, I think up until that point, that may have been our first game that was supposed to be really challenging for us. Um, and so we want to make a statement, and that we did. You certainly did that game. And then we're going to get to the homecoming game that year, too, where you got to beat Colorado, which I'm sure was very special to you. But I got to talk to uh, the All-American Alonzo Mays a couple of weeks ago. It was a wonderful honor. I know he had to be – he was an All-American that year. being That was his last year on campus for OSU. You being your first year as a starter, he had to be a – Huge security blanket for you, wasn't he? Oh, man, big time. I mean, not only, you know, on the field, but off the field, just learning different things from him and and learning how to carry myself while I was there and getting, you know, acclimated to the whole situation I was in. Um, he played a big role. A lot of them did, but he did especially. Um, and going back to that Texas game, he was who I was looking for before I had to scramble and run. And they happened yeah. to triple, double cover him or whatever, and I had to pull it down and run. So, hey, thank him for that. Have you ever talked to Terry Miller? He's from Colorado Springs, and he didn't go to Colorado. You're from Colorado as well, and you didn't go to Colorado. Both ended up at Oklahoma State, had legendary careers. Have you ever talked to, to him about those two arcs? You know, I haven't. I mean, the last time I talked to him was when I was actually there, and he had yeah. came and visited, and we had a short little conversation about being from Colorado and some things, um, but I haven't talked to him since. So that kind of brings me in my next question. You being from Colorado, how did you get away from the Buffaloes? How did oh. you end up at OSU? 
to tell you the truth, I, I wanted to be a Buffalo. You know, sitting there watching them and, and growing up watching uh, Coach McCarthy and, and Darren Hagan and J.J. Flanagan and Enemy. it was – Man, it was awesome. And then to go up there and, and be able to see it, they were only a couple miles away, so we got to see a lot of the games, um, them in the national championship. Um, and so that that was what I had on my mind. And then come recruiting time, I ended my sophomore year and junior year, um, didn't get any calls, didn't get any letters, you know, and they're right wow. down the street. Nobody showed up. Um, and so it was, I, it was, it was confusing at the time. Um, I did go up there on my own to take a, you know, unofficial visit and, and meet a lot of the coaches. And, Ran into Coach Simmons um, at that yeah. time, whose son, you know, had just graduated. Um, and so we talked a little bit, um, but nothing after that, man. And so it was really surprising me being one of the top kids in our state not to be recruited by, you know, the top school in our state at that time. I would think so. How well did you know Nathan in high school? Um, I knew of Nathan. I saw okay. him play, um, knew of him, um, but didn't know him, you know, to the point where we saw each other and talked or anything like that. So how well did you know Coach Simmons when he was at Colorado? Same thing. It was more so a recruiting thing. Yeah. And it was us. I think we had a team camp or seven-on-seven seven camp, and we had went up one summer. Um, and all the coaches were out there playing. And then he came up and introduced himself and let me know who he was and let me know about Nathan. And like I said, yeah. I knew of Nathan. Um, but that was it. And then from that point on, you know, every now and then he would reach out. Um, my yeah. head coach was a CU uh, running back coach. Um, during those years, they went to the national championship. And so they had some strong connections there. So he would reach out to my coach and just kind of check up on me. Um, but at that time, he really wasn't in control about who came in or who they were looking at. He just kind of put me up on their board. You touched on it there, but Bob Simmons was at Colorado before he came to Oklahoma State. So was that your connection to OSU? Is that why you ended up That was my connection, yeah. I mean, as he left and took on that job that first year at Oklahoma State, he just kept on – you know, looking back and seeing what was going on this way, you know, and back where he's coming from and, and kept dibs on me. And then um, at that point, I met Coach Gundy as well as Coach Miles, who were on his staff at that time his first year. Oh, I didn't realize Coach Gundy was on Coach Simmons' staff. Yeah, he was. That first year, he was on that. he was on that staff. Oh, fantastic. So you knew Coach Gundy as a young coach back then. I did. As a matter of fact, he was the first coach to come in and, um, and recruit me. So he came in and he – he met my dad, came up to the school, and he drove to my mom's work. She was working downtown at the time, and he drove all the way downtown and went to her job and sat down and talked with her and just, you know, let her know how much they were interested in me. So that's that was my first coach contact right there from Oklahoma State. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One thing about him, too, is if you ever meet him, that confidence he carries himself with, you, you just never forget it, do you? Oh, no. No, yeah. not at all. He, he has that, that, that type of flair with him. Yeah. That, so that swag, I would say. Absolutely. So you knowing him back then when he was quite a bit younger and seeing what he's done now, is there anything that he's done at OSU that surprised you? Not at all. Not at all. I mean, he he competed the same way as a player. Yeah. So I would expect nothing different from him, whether it's a coach or whether it's him doing whatever he's doing. You know, and so I'm, I'm excited for what he's done. Um, and I look forward to him doing some more stuff. So talking about that period of time, Oklahoma State went on probation in 1989 it had been a long time well since 1988 since OSU had had a winning record so the Oklahoma State fan base was very hungry to have the the 97 team what do you remember when you were getting recruited and then once you got to campus about just the vibes of Oklahoma State football during that time I, I think for me just looking at a school to go to it was um the distance um it was how well I got along I thought about the coaches um, that would take me on. Um, it was about the coaches and those coaches that were recruiting, That how loyal they were. Mm -hmm. uh, were they about the fluff and just trying to get me to go based off of big things they're telling me, or were they really authentic and genuine about what was going on in the situation? Um, and, and that they were. Um, they told me a couple things, and they kind of – it's like, where's the best place for me? Where am I going to be able to go? And regardless of if I play right away or not, am I going to have an opportunity to play? Um, right. And it ended up being, you know, end up being there. There are a couple more places that were there on my recruiting list, but um, I just felt comfortable about coming there. It was different, you know. I actually have, yeah. I had family that was in Tulsa, and oh, I have family yeah. that lived in Wewoka at the time. So it was like I've been there before. I've never been there just to stay there a long time. I've been there. I know what it's like. Um, but how how is it going to be while I'm there? And so it, yeah. it was kind of a rude awakening when I got there. Um, 
but as I adjusted to it, I mean, it was it was the right place for me. I, I don't regret going there. Um, I wouldn't change my decision um, if I could go back. I mean, my experience here was great. Yeah. And whenever you pulled up to campus, of course, the facilities back then, I'll just point blank say it, they weren't good at all, right? <laughs> so oh. what do you remember thinking, like, are you serious? <laughs> do you remember thinking, having that moment? <laughs> you know what? It, it was college, so any of the yeah. college scenes to me were big. Yeah. Oh, um, I didn't I didn't know how bad it was until we started going to other colleges to play at my red shirt year. And I'm getting to see these things. They have I'm like, oh, my gosh. And then I come back to our stuff. I'm like, oh, this. Yeah, this is this is really they don't care about us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. but it, again, um, it kind of went with the mode that we were all in at that time. Um, yeah. Our W's class that came in and then my class and those that came in after me, it was like, you know what? We're here not for the glitz and the glam. We're here to make this program better. We know we can do something here. We want to prove a point. And so it was just like, regardless of what we have, you're going to know who we are when we get done. As soon as we get to, to doing the things we need to do and get to the competition level that we want to be at, we're going to make a name for ourselves. And everybody who plays us is going to remember the things we were able to do. What do you remember about Jamal Fobbs and Nathan Simmons, your running backs? Man, um, I still talk to Jamal to this day. We're yeah. really, really good friends. Nathan, I haven't talked to in a while. Is he um, back in Louisiana, I guess? He is back in Louisiana. He's coaching yeah. at uh, Louisiana. Yeah. Him and his, he's, his brother's coaching there as well. But he's, he's okay, a running good. back coach there. Yeah. Um, lightning and Thunder. Yeah. Um, Nathan was really smooth, really big back. for his, He had nice size, man. Um, really strong. He's one of the strongest dudes in the weight room um, by far. Um, Jay, on the other hand, was really shifty and, and quick, um, but really smooth at the way he ran too. And so they complemented each other really, really well. Um, it was cool because me and Jay, we came in as roommates. We redshirted together. And so a lot of the experiences we had, a lot of things we dealt with that red shirt year um, made us even closer, man. And mm -hmm. so um, we all three ended up being roommates uh, the following year. And so we just had that really good close connection, man. Um, but they were they were really good. And, again, they had that mindset that, you know what, we may not be a powerhouse now or be some popular team that's out there and have this prestige, but uh, we're going to try to get there. What was Bob Simmons like? He seemed like a guy that was real all business and we're going to kind of do it this way, and that's that's just the way it is. Yep, that's exactly. He's old school, yeah. old school yeah. to a T. Now he may have a smile on his face, but yeah. behind that smile is some seriousness, you know. Always, and he would joke every now and then. Really serious guy, really serious guy. But he would, he would give it to you whether you liked it or not. He wasn't yeah. going to sugarcoat anything. <laughs> it is the way it is, and you have to deal with it. Yeah. Did you ever have that moment where you're sitting in Stillwater, Oklahoma? You're what ten hours away from Denver, and you're going. What in the world am I doing sitting here in the middle of a campus in Oklahoma? Did you ever have that moment? Oh, a couple of times. <laughs> Every time we left Stillwater to go to the city, yeah, um, and we had to pass the pig farm. Oh yeah, then it, that was like, yeah. okay, man, this is crazy right here. Um, trying to find a radio station. <laughs> No radio station well, that, that I wanted to listen to. We had to always go and buy CDs and, you know, tapes and things. So it was like, man, this is, I can't even listen to the music I want to by just turning on the radio. I got to go buy CDs. I don't want to pay the money for yeah. CDs, but that's the only thing that's going to gonna make me feel more comfortable because I, yeah. can't, I, can't, I can't get down with the country yeah. stuff. So no tumbleweed for Tony Lynn. You know what? I can't say that. I was at tumbleweed. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I was just on the other side. Okay. Oh, you're on the other side. Yeah, I can't remember the name of it, but that I was, was a at fun Tremors. Place. Tremors. Yeah, yeah, Tremors. And I'm assuming, you know, you had to have to get all those CDs. I'm sure you spent a day or two at Record Exchange looking oh, for all, all the, the time. CDs. We were all yeah. the time. Any chance we got, new music came out, we were there. Absolutely. That was one of the greatest places <laughs> of all time. I love that place. Then we go shoot pool at the queue as well. So, okay, let's get back to 97 that season. And I'm sure it was very motivating for you to show the University of Colorado, Rick Neuheisel in particular, exactly what, what they're missing in Tony Lindsay. So you have that factor. It's homecoming. You're having a great season. It's an ESPN game. And then it starts raining. I mean, just tell us what you remember about that homecoming game. All week. I couldn't – I mean, man, I couldn't wait all week. I talked to my dad, like, twice a day, every day, you know, just let him know how excited I was um, about the opportunity to play them, um, about to see guys that I played against in high school. Um, and then, you know, it was personal. 
Okay. Yeah. I did. I really did want to, I want to stay home. Um, not because it was close to family because I just loved the, I loved the program that I was watching yeah. at that time. And so I was like, man, how dare you guys pass up on me? And yeah. now is the perfect opportunity to make you guys regret not sending me a letter to yeah. sign with you. Um, and so I, I couldn't wait, man. I was anxious and nervous and everything at once. <laughs> um, but the night came, um, I got to see my family before we went on over to, to get warmed up and stuff. So that excited me even more. Um, and then it, it didn't matter what the weather was, didn't matter who was there. Um, it was just us on that field against them. And that's, I mean, heck, I can't even remember the crowd. Yeah. When I go back and kind of look at tapes, I'm like, wow, it was rocking. Yeah. It, it was remember. really cool, yeah. man. Yeah. But during the game, it was just us and, and the field and everything else was kind of blocked out from that point. Can you share with us at least the, the G version of your conversation with Rick Neuheisel and, and John Hessler after the game, the quarterback for Colorado? Oh, man, you know what? I don't even know if I had any. Oh, really? Yeah, you know, okay. I didn't even. I really didn't even look for. I looked for the guys that I played against or played yeah. with in the Denver area. Aside from that, I could care less about who came to talk to me or where Neuheisel was or Hessler. I, I didn't give a damn. Yeah, yeah. I can go ahead and take y'all's tails back to Colorado, and remember <laughs> what, and, and remember what happened. That's how I yeah. felt. <laughs> that is awesome. Okay, so I got to fast forward directly to the touchdown pass to the All-American Alonzo Mays. By the way, if anybody's ever on O-State, they're not allowed to say Alonzo Mays without also uh, (laughs) precluding All-American before you say his name because he is one of the most absolute studs ever at OSU. So the the last pass to him, you roll to your right, you throw it across your body, laid across the middle, which is what every coach, including your dad, has probably told you not to do in the game of football as quarterback. And Big Duke goes and catches it, and we're partying, right? Tell us what you remember about that play. My thing with, with Lonzo, um, it didn't matter who was around him. Yeah. He's open. Yeah, he is. That's how I looked at it. And he would tell me that, too. He'd bring me to the huddle. We'd be in the huddle, and he's like, remember, man, it don't matter who's over here. Just throw the ball. I'm open. I'm like, man, what are you talking yeah. about? There's four guys on you. He said, man, just shut up and do it. <laughs> Do what I ask you to do. Just trust me. Um, but uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity that I had to throw that pass because the series before I fumbled. I, fumbled oh, I didn't and, remember and that. I yeah, forgot that. I'm thinking, you know, they called a quarterback round and they stripped me and I fumbled. So I'm thinking, gosh, dog, I just messed up this game. We're about to lose this game because of mistake on my behalf. Um, and we got an interception. And so I'm thinking, okay, now it's my time to get back, you know, from the mistake that I did. And it's like, okay, we've been running this play all night. And all night has pretty much been open. I know I'm going to have the corner when I get around on this boot. Now it's just a matter of who's open or am I going to have to take it and just run and get what I can to keep this drive going. Um, and so I make my fake. I get around the corner. Of course, there's nobody there. Somebody's trying to chase me, but I knew he wasn't going to get to me. And it's like, okay, who's open downfield? I saw Alonzo. I also saw Sean Love in the back of the end zone behind Alonzo. And I'm like, man, let me just throw it up in the area of Alonzo. Sean's there, so maybe if it's overthrown, maybe he can do something. Let me just hurry up and get it up to him. I'm not going to think about it. I'm just going to get it up. And so I just threw it up in that direction. And he comes down with the catch. And hey, all else is history. Tell us what you thought after you saw him catch it. Oh, hell like, first yeah. Of all, first of all, back up. When he threw it in the air, were you like, oh, crap, oh, crap? I mean, take us through that and then at what, what you felt like after he caught it. No, I was just like, man, get the ball up in the air. Okay. Somebody's okay. going to make a play. <laughs> just the way things yeah. are happening tonight, yeah. somebody's making a play. Get that ball up and let them do yeah. their part. And so it's just like a matter of fact, just get the ball up, man. Get it up to them and let, let, let one of my playmakers make a play. So, I mean, after that, it was just like, hey, let's see what happens. That's absolutely awesome. So you're known for running that little speed option play and then also that the boot play that you mentioned just a minute ago. Talk about those two plays and how many times you ran those at OSU. It was Coach Miles. He, Coach Miles wants to make it a point yeah. uh, that he's going to use my legs. Yeah. I don't care how big you are, Tony. I'm going to use you. That's what he used to tell me. And I know for a fact it was the Colorado game and the Texas game. He said, man, I'm going to use you, so don't get mad at me. I'm going to use you for what you do really well. Not saying you can't throw the ball, but I'm going to put you in a position to succeed and have success. 
and that's you using your legs. And so we're going to put in some things where you don't have to run, man, and be a part. I didn't care at all. I just wanted to play. I mean, I just love being out there. It didn't matter what he had me doing. Yeah. It was just like, man, I want to be out there with the guys and, and do my part in helping us win. And so I knew I knew he would be calling all kind of different things for me to use my legs. It was just a matter of what's open and taking it and, and killing the other defense, you know, with it and making them pay. Um, yeah. And that's what we did. Yeah. I got to say, though, you know, you mentioned using your legs, Coach Miles and all that. I got to say, man, you were a good passer. I mean, I, I think your passing got – because you were such a good runner, do you feel like maybe that, that your passing and the way you were able to go through your progressions and find the open receivers, do you feel like your passing was quite a bit underrated because you were able to run so well? I think it was. But, you know, for me it was what can I do to help my team out? It wasn't me being selfish and I want to throw the ball more and prove that I can throw the ball. It's like what do you yeah. need me to do? I'm going to do this, you know, I'm going to try to do it at my best, you know, my highest level, and hopefully, it, you know, it works. Yeah, I mean, it's always good to throw passes as a quarterback, yeah. especially when yeah. you are a running quarterback because you do want to show, man, I can, re I can I really can do both. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the end of the day, it's me being a team player, you know, and what I need yeah. to do. So, 97, you play Purdue in the bowl. It's, it's absolutely awesome. It's the first bowl game since 1988, almost an entire decade. 98 rolls around. We lose to Tulsa on the road, which back then it was like we lost to Tulsa every time we went there. It was like something. It was like a Bermuda Triangle. Do you remember anything about that night? It was rough. I had a yeah. rough night, like, yeah. period, myself. You yeah. know, I, I had – I think I had a couple fumbles and maybe some intercepts. I just wasn't – it was – everything was off. Yeah. I can remember going down at the bottom of a pile, I think, after I fumbled one time and getting gouged in the eye, man. It, it was – it was a rough night, man. Defense couldn't get off the field, and it yeah. it was it was overall it was it was bad. Yeah. So I remember that game, and then I remember the game at Arrowhead where Nathan got stopped at the goal line and, and, and against Nebraska, and Nebraska was winning national titles back then. What do you remember? I mean, that was an awesome game. I know OSU lost, but still, I mean, as an OSU fan, you left that game super proud of everything that happened that night and it was at arrowhead it was on espn all the espn guys were like this is the blueprint of how to beat nebraska and all that kind of thing so what do you remember about that game i remember defense stepping up and doing a hell of a job coach ryan yeah. had them had them going man yada and ntk and all the linebackers man they were yada yeah man, it was, yeah, yeah. Oh, it yeah. was it was something to see just sitting on the sideline watching them play um because he really did have them going and they were so so smart you talk about a smart group of players, man, that, that defensive IQ we had was off the charts. And so they play one hell of a game. Um, I remember going back and watching film and watching myself and the opportunities we did get to throw the ball um, weren't good. Um, I looked at myself throwing. They were all – the balls were all over the place. They were in the ground. And so I never, never got into a rhythm that game. So for us to still be in the game like we were – um, and misfiring on a couple different things. Um, it, it was awesome, man. And it, it was against, I don't know if they were number one or number two that week. Just to show that we could compete at the same level as them, you know, was what we were trying. We, we were trying to win the game. Forget competing. If we got the opportunity to win, let's win. I remember our running game being um, really strong. Yeah. It was hard for them to stop us. And I'm thinking, gosh, dog, we're running on, on what they call themselves, the black shirts. Yeah. They we're running on the black shirts right now. Like it's nothing. Like there's somebody who's, you know, not what they say they are. This is this is crazy to me, but let's go ahead and try to get this dub. And so it was just a lot of excitement, man. And and we had the same type of feeling like, man, we can win this game. We're going to win this game. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we didn't. What was the post-game locker room like after that? I mean, it's one of those mixed deals to where you're super proud. I mean, it's an exciting moment because you, you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with number one, but yet you still didn't win. So that had to be kind of a contrast, didn't it? It, it, it was. I mean, just the fact that we were, like I say, able to compete with those guys and know that we had the talent to compete with them was, was good. That was a good feeling. Um, but it's never good to lose. Yeah, and we right. knew that we had an opportunity to win that game. And we didn't. So, you know, at that is, hey, it was just, it was good, but it wasn't good. All right, let's fast forward to the Texas game as well. And I'm going to say this for you. You don't have to say it yourself. That was one of the worst calls I've ever seen on Marcus Jones and that pass interference. <laughs> that was pitiful. You remember that? Yeah, well, look at where we were playing at. <laughs> oh, Texas, yeah. 
Absolutely. That was the, the beginning of the major Applewhite era at Texas. What do you remember about that game? They, of course, they kicked a field goal with seven seconds left after they called the, the, the pass interference on Marcus Jones. But what do you remember about that? Oh, man, I, I remember, again, using my legs as, as far yeah. as me. Yeah. Um, I remember doing a lot of things um, that weren't out of the ordinary for us. Um, there were a lot of things we put in that week that were different and kind of threw them off. Um, and it was a great thing. It worked in our favor. Um, I remember them not being able to stop the option. Yeah, They could not stop it worth anything. I remember us pretty much handling Ricky Williams, too. He had yes. one nice run at the end of the game. Um, other than that, we kind of held, we, we held him in check. We did. Um, but, again, we were really, really close. We were competing. We were going back and forth. Um Couple calls here and there, um, but again, it was us to you know show that we had what it take to compete with those that were considered the tops of the Big Twelve. I've always been curious. Of course, you had a wonderful career at OSU, but it, it kind of like uh, Alonzo Mays that we've talked about. It ended with an injury towards the end of it there in two thousand, and then that's the year where Bob Simmons uh, gets removed, and that's when Les Miles comes in. So that had to be a really weird situation for you, didn't it? It, it, it was big time. I mean, just the fact yeah. we we lost Coach Miles that yeah. was that was so huge. I mean, to me, it re, our connection on our relationship at that time was, gosh, we were inseparable. Yeah. You know, and I really thrived off of the things that he did to put me in position and our conversations. I mean, we were really, really close. And for him to leave, that kind of that kind of hurt me, man. It's like, man, the guys that I really, really like. They're leaving. Coach yeah. Gundy came in. I'm like, oh, man, I can't wait. I can't wait for him to be my quarterback coach. And I get here and he's gone. Yeah. Coach Miles yeah. leaves. And now I'm left with Coach Simmons. You know, I have some more staff that are there, but not that connection um, that I had before. Um, and so Coach Simmons leaving. You know, on top of that, we're, we got injuries taking place. I'm injured. Um we're not doing the things that we're capable of doing. And so it was just, I, I don't know, some things that we couldn't stop from. It was a domino effect. So your first year at Oklahoma State was either the first year or the second year of on-the-field play of the Big 12. Do you remember that? Which yes, one it is? It would have been the second year okay. of Big 12 play. So I kind of say that to relate it to where the position Oklahoma State's in now it's the same conference, Big 12, but all new schools coming in, just like you guys got to experience back then in the mid-90s to the late 90s when we transitioned from the Big 8 to the Big 12. So uh, do you see any similarities there? And what would you tell all of the people at OSU how you guys dealt with it? Uh, I don't – there's some similarities there. Yeah. Um, I think the teams that we had back, back then yeah. – um, and the style that we played in yeah, yeah. was completely different. Yeah, right. Um, but, I mean, it, 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 it brings more competition. You know, it brings more um, of the teams that you're not aware of and don't know about um, to make it exciting. Um, so anytime you can bring in new teams and, and make it bigger and better, um, it's good. But I, I think right now we're just trying to get a feel for what the new conference is going to be like. And so this right. is just them breaking themselves in, kind of like we did. Um, yeah. But once it got rolling, um, man, it was a thing to watch. And it so I, I think and I, I, I hope that it's like that for the, you know, for the new current Big 12. So you're coaching there in the Denver area, which is right there next to Boulder. So what type of impact has Coach Prime made on the, the, the high school football scene in Colorado? To be honest with you, yeah, <laughs> not too big of one. Um, if you if you listen to how he recruits, if you listen to what he's looking for, um, Colorado is not on his radar, and he's in Colorado, um, and that's just him being him, him feeling a, a certain way that he does. Um, we still have guys that want to show, you know, what they're made of, and show that just because we're from a, a place that's not heavily recruited. Um, that we do have talent here. Um, we may not have as much, but there is talent here that can play with the kids that he's recruiting. Um, and so in a way, it's pushing kids to work harder. Um, but in a way, it's like, okay, well, I understand what he wants, so let me go Let me go find somewhere where they want me and where I want to play. So it's, it's kind of mixed feelings when it comes to that. 
um, as far as high school football and recruiting, you always want to look good for the coaches that are there. And with him being in state, it's not like he can overlook it. He still has to listen to different things and see different things being played as far as the state. But um, you just never know. Right now we're kind of on the outside looking in as far as that. I'm sure you don't want to speak for him, but then again, you probably know the the answer to this. But Gabe Lindsay, you have to be very proud that that your younger brother came to Oklahoma State. Oh man, it was great. Um, I played with Gabe all my life, <laughs> so so to continue that phase of football with my little brother um, and go through college with my brother, man, was awesome. You know, there's not too many people who are able to to able to do that and have that opportunity. So for him to be there with me and us to be together and accomplish things on the field and off the field there, um, it was amazing. Um, in high school, he was more so my running back. You know, he did play receiver. But when I left high school, he went to running back and he was killing as a running back. And then yeah. he comes back up and he starts to running back and they move him to receiver. And it's like, oh, man, I know this. We know this well. Yeah, I know what you do. Yeah. I know how you do it. We're just on a different level, but we still know each other like the back of our hand. So it was it was great to be able to play with Gabe. So you hurt your shoulder that last year at OSU, but then you did play some pro ball after your college career. Can you take us through that? Yeah, I tried. You know, I um, hurt my shoulder. I had surgery my senior year. Um, and gosh, it took about a year to heal all the way up. Um, I didn't have much time. And so I had got a contract from – the Montreal Alouettes. Oh, nice. That summer. And went up there still with a, a bum shoulder and tried to do what I could. You know, it was a, it's a different game up there. Did you try to move positions any? I, I thought about it, but I wanted yeah. to see where, where it took me. And so I went yeah. up there um, and did play quarterback and, and had okay. an opportunity to play. Um, but then my shoulder kind of tweaked on me again. And that's oh. when I'm like, okay, well, well can I play something uh, else? Yeah. I'll play whatever, what else <laughs> yeah. can I play? Um, uh, I just want to play it and, and, and see if I still have that passion for the game. doesn't matter where I'm at. doesn't matter how long or wide the field is or what the rules are. Um, I just want to see if I still have this passion to play this game. Because if not, then this, you know, it's time for me to move on. Yeah. Um, and I, I did, but I just was hurt. And because me not being healthy, it kind of, you know, threw a wrench and all that. And so I end up getting cut. And the following year, I go to um, Calgary. And they, they give me a contract there. And I'm playing quarterback and I'm competing. Um, and I go through the whole preseason and the first, you know, couple of games and then end up um, getting cut there. So I tried it. Um, at the end of the day, uh, when they did cut me, it was like, okay, this – this is not for me. I'm having a better time just being in Canada and my surrounding area and just being there in that new place. I'm having a better time just chilling there than I am playing a game, you know? So maybe it's time for me to cut. And then another thing that bothered me is when I did take the money back home that I made, I mean, they cut that stuff in half. It seemed like, <laughs> and so I'm like, this is, this ain't good. I don't like this. They're going to do this. I don't, I don't like this. That's um, funny. But I did enjoy it, and I, I thank them for the opportunity of, you know, letting me play um, and do some things up there. Um, but, yeah, I tried, but it just wasn't for me. And it's not not for everybody. And, you know, some people make it, some people don't. And it just, just, just wasn't my luck. It's been 24 years since you left campus. I can't believe I'm, I just said it's been 24 <laughs> years since Tony Lindsay left the campus of Oklahoma State. It seems like yesterday, no doubt. You don't look a day older, but unfortunately you are, right? So, hey, can you fill in the gap between the last time we saw you in Stillwater and, and now here in 2024? Well, you know what? I actually got to come back to my first game since Gay played, and that was in, I want to say, 2002. Nice. Um, so I came to the very first game this season to watch him play uh, South Dakota, I believe it was. Um, and got to bring my wife and my kids to come and see, you know, where I used to play and get down and all that. So it, it was, gosh, it was really, really cool to see the changes there. And like I said, I haven't been there in over 15 years, man. And um, just to oh, see. Oh, really? The, yeah, just to see what's been done up there. get you back down here, brother. Yeah, really. You know, I did. I stopped through a couple years ago. My daughter and my niece were at a volleyball camp um, down down south. I don't want to say where. <laughs> oh. But they were at a volleyball camp, and so I had an opportunity to kind of drive through and, and, and just check on a couple of people but not really see all the changes. Um, but I was able to see it going to the game this year. Um, so it's it great 
man, is this man a whole nother world there. And I, I wish we could have got some of that stuff, a, a half of the stuff they have now. Yeah, um, absolutely. But it's, I mean, gosh, since I left, it's, it's changed a lot. Um, since then, I mean, I, I came back home and I'm a teacher. So I've been teaching for the last, I want to say, 18 years now, man. I, I teach fifth what grade. What field of teaching? Uh, fifth grade, so elementary school. Nice, nice. And so I'm trying to get to them before they get, uh, you know, too, too out of control. I, I I enjoy, you know, doing what I'm doing. I do wish that I could get back and forth to Stillwater a lot more. Yeah. Um, but I miss it. I miss it, man. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, oh, of course, your brother, Gabe. You keep in touch, uh, contact with him. But RW, K-Dub, and Kevin Williams, Courtney Mallory, Alonzo Mays, all the guys that you played with. Who all do you keep in touch with? You know, we actually have a uh, a text line. We call it the, the the old state '90s crew. Oh, nice! And so there's a lot of us on there, man, that stay in com- in communication with each other, and we text back and forth. And when we're able to, you know, kind of hook up with each other, where we're in each other's cities or towns or whatever. And so, um, I, I talk to a lot of them often. Final thoughts here, man. This has been a great honor. I've taken a lot of your time. I know you just got out of practice and you're kind enough to go to a classroom and find a window. You know, if you're not familiar with public school room uh, buildings, it's like if you're in the middle of them, there is zero cell coverage. So we had to find a window that you see right behind Tony there, and we got it done. So thank you so much for joining us, State Daddy. Final thoughts? Man, just I, I appreciate you having me on. It's always good to talk about uh, what's being done with Old State, uh, the fans, the coaches, the players. Um, enjoy being a part of it. Um, and I'm looking forward to us turning this thing around. Yeah. Especially getting this, uh, this W against Colorado uh, next week. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. So, Tony Lindsay, thank you so much for joining us today, Daily. Thanks for having me.